This is Karen. Hello, everybody. I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of Yellowstone National Park, nature's masterpiece, and the vocabulary words are impression. Impression. My first impression of Judy was that she was a confident and capable person. Yeah, I love Judy. Me too. Outdoors. Outdoors. Noah's parents love the outdoors and try to enjoy nature as much as possible. Jet. Jet. Marcy placed her head under the jet of cold air coming from the air conditioner. Surround. Surround. Open fields surround the farm. Hmm. Trail. Trail. We were lost in the woods until we found an old trail leading back to the highway. Breath. Breath. The lifeguard took a long breath before diving into the water. That's right. We're talking about this beautiful, magnificent place called the Yellowstone National Park. I think Yellowstone National Park, well, everyone knows it's beautiful, but mm -hmm. maybe the most famous thing there are the geysers. The geysers? What are the geysers? The geysers are basically just water that shoots up from within the earth mm -hmm. and just shoots up in the air like Old Faithful is mm -hmm. a really famous geyser because around without fail yeah every 90 minutes approximately it yeah. will suddenly whoosh and it will shoot up into the air so it's kind of like a, a water fountain yeah and there's like 500 of those That's that is so amazing cool. wow and also I remember I read in the article that it has the third largest hot spring and it's Beautiful oh, yeah. and Yellowstone National it Park. It looks like a like a rainbow. The colors are really really pretty. Yes, so I would love to bathe in that hot spring. Man, you Why? can't. It's Why? actually illegal <gasps> to bathe or swim or go inside there because they want to keep all the pollution away. They want to keep it nice and beautiful. I assume that's the reason, or it could maybe be too hot, mm. or maybe the dangerous. Who knows? But it is off limits. But okay. It's great enough to just be able to look at it and take in the beauty through your eyes. You are absolutely right. <laughs> okay, so let's learn more about this amazing place, Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park, Mother Nature's masterpiece. If Mother Nature were an artist, then one of her greatest masterpieces would be Yellowstone National Park. That was my impression when I recently visited the park for the first time. I had been looking forward to spending some time in the great outdoors, and this ancient stretch of land, located in the American Northwest, seemed like the perfect choice. Today's lesson is called Yellowstone National Park, Mother Nature's Masterpiece. Part 1. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. Yes, we're going to Yellowstone National Park, one of the great jewels in the American National Park System. One of the great national parks in the whole world, I would say. A place I've never been, but one of those places that I feel if I went there, it'd be like, oh yeah, there's that thing that I've seen a million times. Oh yeah, there's that other beautiful thing that's been in a hundred nature documentaries. It is picturesque, it is beautiful, it is huge, and it's something you should definitely try to check out if you're ever in the western part of the U.S. Yeah. Its reputation precedes itself. Definitely. Okay, so even if you haven't been there, and I haven't been there either, <gasps> I know a whole lot about Yellowstone National Parks and some of the things that you can see there. Anyways though, if Mother Nature were an artist, then one of her greatest masterpieces would be Yellowstone National Park. Hmm. So there you go, if Mother Nature were an artist, a painter let's say, what would she paint? What would her best piece of work be? What would her masterpiece be? Yellowstone National Park. That's the idea here. Now, I haven't been to Yellowstone National Park, and nor has Mike, but our author 
has been to Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. That is pretty cool. And then the author goes on to say, that was my impression when I recently visited the park for the first time. Mm -hmm. So the impression that if nature was Van Gogh or Picasso or Da Vinci, this would be nature's Mona Lisa or something like that. Just an amazing, amazing place. That was the, art, the, the author's impression. Now your impression, this noun means kind of your feeling of a place, all right? And often we use it to talk about your first feeling of a place. You could say my first impression, but also it's kind of the idea here is that when you first encounter something, you first meet a person or go somewhere or taste some new food. These are the first ideas, thoughts, feelings that kind of pop into your mind. And also later on when you're remembering it, if those memories stick around, it probably made a strong impression on you as if it's like pressing itself into your mind uh, like a like a stamp or you know, forming clay or something like that so it's a it's a strong feeling often a very first feeling for example my first impression of Judy was that she was a confident and capable person I first met her I talked to her for five minutes if you'd stop me right there and said what do you think of Judy she seems confident and capable now that impression could change as you get to know them but generally you know when we meet someone in the first few minutes we get a good feeling or a good impression of who they are yeah we get a sense of them immediately that's the impression they leave on us anyways more on Yellowstone National mm. Park next our author writes I had been looking forward to spending some time in the great outdoors and this ancient stretch of land located in the American Northwest seemed like the perfect choice so this person wanted to get out into the great outdoors where should i go oh how about yellowstone national park there's no better place anywhere on planet earth to get out of the indoors and out to the outdoors yes when we're talking about outdoors the great outdoors we're talking about being out in nature get out of the house close that door behind you and lock it and get out into nature the great outdoors if you are outdoors you are not inside chances are you've got blue skies over your head and yes you are in nature anyways for example you could say Noah's parents love the outdoors and try to enjoy nature as much as possible. And yes, this word outdoors, it's a noun here. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hello, 大家好,我是Hanny. 在这两天的课文里面，我们要跟着作者去游览黄石国家公园。Mike老师说他虽然没有去过，但是也有在一些自然生态纪录片里面看过他美丽的风景。那老师用到documentary，就是在document档案这个字后面加ary会变成名词docum
if 子句呢，它的动词要用过去式。如果你要用 be 动词表达，那不管人称是什么，一律都要用 were。来看两个例句 ：If I were you, I would break up with him。如果我是你，我会跟他分手。那注意 I 后面不是搭配 was， 而是要搭配 were。If I had a million dollars, I would buy a sports car. 如果我有一百万美元，我会买一辆跑车。好，接着回到课文中。Yellowstone National Park, Mother Nature's masterpiece. Yellowstone has around 500 geysers, but its most famous is Old Faithful. Standing on the geyser's viewing platform, I saw jets of boiling water shoot up from the ground into the sky. This happens without fail every 90 minutes or so, and that's how Old Faithful got its name. I didn't think anything could top watching this geyser in action until I saw the Grand Prismatic Spring. It's the third largest hot spring in the world, but what makes it special isn't its size; rather, it's the rainbow of colors that surround its pool of deep blue water. Nothing in the world can compare with it. Okay, next, folks, we're going to talk about geysers. <laughs> Water shooting into the sky—that's the idea here. And Yellowstone apparently is chock full of geysers. Yellowstone has around 500 geysers, but its most famous is Old Faithful. Apparently, you can't set your watch to Old Faithful. But it's close. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Standing on the geyser's viewing platform, I saw jets of boiling water shoot up from the ground into the sky. Yes, geysers are part of the sort of geological life of the Earth. Water trapped underground gets heated up by lava. You know that stuff that comes out of volcanoes. Super hot water goes shooting up, and I think Old Faithful it shoots up every 50 minutes or something like It's that. Very faithful. It's very faithful. It's all very reliable, like a clock. Maybe not quite like a clock, but still, it's something really cool for the tourists to go see. And you'll definitely have to see this and get a picture of that jet of boiling water shooting up out of the ground. What is a jet? Here we're not talking about an airplane. Not that kind of jet. But the idea here is a thin, powerful stream of water, or something like that—a fire hose. If you turn it on full power, you'll get a jet of water. It's not kind of a thin spray like you might get from a shower or something like that. No, a jet will knock you over if you're standing in like front a of a laser beam of like water. Like a laser beam of water, a jet of water. We use that term to talk about planes because a plane is powered by a jet of air. Air goes shooting out of the back of those engines. Pushing the plane forward in the same way that a jet of water from a powerful hose would knock things down. It's thin, it's powerful, it shoots out, and you don't want to be in front of it. For example, Marcy placed her head under the jet of cold air coming from the air conditioner. Wow, she's got a powerful air conditioner.、Um, we also might say a hair dryer might、mm. give you a jet of warm air to、yeah. dry your hair. You can't dry your hair with the cold air or、Maybe. a fire hose. Or No, that would be the、yeah. exact opposite. Yeah, no, that wouldn't、that'd、work. Stay don't, away don't from try that. that. That's not a good method. Anyways, Old Faithful, it shoots its jet of water、mm -hmm. there faithfully. Yes,、mm -hmm. this happens. This geyser shoots that jet of water into the air.、Mm -hmm. This happens without fail every 90 minutes or so, and that's how Old Faithful got its name. So, can you set your watch to it? Is it precise? No, it's 90 minutes or so. But it's close. Anyways, that's Old Faithful. Moving on, the author has something to say about the Grand Prismatic Spring, which already sounds gorgeous.、Mm -hmm. Anyways, I didn't think anything could top watching this geyser, Old Faithful, in action. Until I saw the Grand Prismatic Spring. Wow, that's a pretty grand name. Grand、yeah. meaning impressive, large, something that make you go wow. What is this thing? It says it's the third largest hot spring in the world. But what makes it special isn't its size; rather, it's the rainbow of colors that surround. It's pool of deep blue water. I think I've seen a picture of this in a National Geographic. So we have a spring, this sort of 
water that again comes from the center of the earth or under the ground. But what makes it really amazing, what gives it the name a prismatic spring, is this rainbow of colors that surround a prism. Is that glass triangle that you shoot light through, and then the rainbow colors. Come outside. That rainbow of colors is a prism, or sorry, the the glass thing is a prism,、mm -hmm. but prismatic is the light that comes out. That rainbow of colors, very beautiful. So there you go. This water in this particular spring kind of acts like a prism. It、mm. separates colors out of that visible. Uh, white light, people say it separates that into all sorts of different colors. So we would say that this is a prismatic effect. It、nice. makes this rainbow of colors possible. Now, before we move on, let's talk about what it means to surround something. If you surround something, you are all, you are on all sides of that thing. An army might surround its enemy. A fence. Might surround a person's house or a person's property, one way or another. If one thing surrounds the other thing, it's all around that thing. For example, open fields surrounded the farm, so the farm is in the middle. The fields are on all sides. Anyways, the grand prismatic spring, nothing in the world can compare with it.、It's, That's what the author said. It's very unique. It's very unique.、Mm. Nothing can. Only in Yellowstone. Only in Yellowstone, which we'll be talking about more after this. 好，黄石公园大约有五百个间歇泉，那最有名的是老中石间歇泉 （Old Faithful）。它每隔九十分钟左右一定会喷发，会有沸腾的水从地面射向天空。那么 Jeff 老师刚刚说，这座公园充满了间歇泉。老师用到 chock full 这个字 ，C H O C K 连字号 F U L L。这个字形容充满的，我们可以用 be chock full of something 来表达充满的某事物。那么 Mike 老师刚刚则提到呢，间歇泉这种地质现象是跟火山熔岩有关。那么 geological 就可以用来形容地质的地质学的，它是拼作 g e o l o g i c a l geological。好，老师还有用到 lava， l a v a lava 表示熔岩。好，再来看单字 jet。Jet 有喷射机的意思，那在课文里面它是指喷射流，像是液体或气体的喷射流。老师们刚刚形容水的喷射啊，就像镭射光束一样。那他们说的 laser beam，L A S E R 空格 B E A M，laser beam 就是镭射光束。好，那么作者接着介绍到大棱镜温泉，让它与众不同的呢，不是它的大小，而是环绕深蓝色池水的七彩颜色。那我们用到单字 surround， surround 就表示围绕、环绕。那顺便补充一下 ，prism 这个字 ，p r i s m， prism 它表示棱镜。好，那这边还有三个重点。第一个重点是句型 make 加受词加受词补语，是表达使某人事物成为怎么样，变得怎么样。动词 make 在这边表示使成为，使变成。那么受词补语，我们常,常会用名词或形容词表达。那就来造两个例句。Listening to music makes me happy. 听音乐让我变得快乐。那这边受词补语是用形容词 happy。His performance in the movie made him a superstar. 他在那部电影里面的演出使他成为超级巨星。那这边受词不语是用名词 a superstar。第二个重点，副词 rather 在这边呢是用来更正前面的叙述，来表达说更确切的说怎么样，而是怎么样，相反的怎么样怎么样。例如 ，What matters is not what he did, but rather why he did it. 重要的不是他做了什么。而是为什么他会这么做？好，第三个重点 ，rainbow 它表示彩虹，我们常常会用 the rainbow of colors 或是 a rainbow of colors 来表达五颜六色、色彩缤纷。例如 ，macarons come in a rainbow of colors， 马卡龙有各式各样的颜色，这个甜点五颜六色、色彩缤纷。解华课文中。Yellowstone National Park, Mother Nature's masterpiece. Next, I went for a walk along a gentle trail that brought me past some wonderful views of Yellowstone's Grand Canyon. The amazing sight of its huge rock walls and winding rivers took my breath away. Okay, I guess this person's done. They've seen it all. They saw the Grand 
prismatic spring. Nothing can top it. So they left. They went home. Hmm. All right. But wait, they went no, home. they didn't of go home. Not. There's still a lot more to yeah. see. Yeah, you kidding? There's, There's a lot so more to the more article. To so after Old Faithful, after the Grand Prismatic Spring, of course there's a lot more to see. This is one of the biggest national parks in the world. Next, it says, I went for a walk along a gentle trail that brought me past some wonderful views of Yellowstone's Grand Canyon. Ah, uh, yes, a beautiful trail or a gentle trail in this case. What is a trail? It's a good place to go hiking. That's what a trail is because it's a rough path that goes through the outdoors, goes through wilderness, goes through a forest or, you know, up a hill, up a mountain or something like that. It hasn't really been prepared. It's not covered in concrete or anything like that. It's got rough rocks and dirt on it. If it rains, it might be muddy and slippery, so be careful. But if you're out in nature, that's what you'd expect to find. And even if it is a little rough, it, it's a lot easier than chopping your way through the grass and the trees and stuff like that. So a trail is either made by animals or by people, but it's a rough path through a wild area. For example, we were lost in the woods until we found an old trail leading back to the highway. Yeah, if you're lost, finding a trail is, yeah. is, is, a, is a lifeline for sure. Yeah, it might bring you back to good old civilization. Or where the bears live. Anyways, the author did not go home. No. Okay, the author continued to see amazing stuff. Anyways, next the author writes, the amazing sight of its huge rock walls and winding rivers took my breath away. <gasps> I get the feeling that this is going to continue to happen throughout the article, okay? One thing is going to top one thing after another. Uh. You think this is the best, something else is going to top that, so on and so forth, one after the other. Yellowstone is just that amazing of a place, apparently. Anyways, before we take a break, let's talk about breath. When you're breathing and you inhale, you take a breath. Okay, so here, if, someone, if something takes your breath away, you momentarily can't breathe because you're so surprised in a good way. For example, the lifeguard took a long breath before diving into the water. He was saving someone. He was going to have to hold his breath while swimming underwater there to save that person, let's say. All right, folks, today's lesson is now in the books, but don't go away. More on Yellowstone will be coming up next time. 好，作者接着沿着一条步道行走，那么沿途看到了黄石大峡谷的美景，这个壮丽的景象让他叹为观止。那我们的单词 trail。Trail 它是指小路、小径，尤其是指乡村或是林间的小路。还有 breath，breath breath 表示呼吸。Take one's breath away， 就像这样，就是令人叹为观止，美到令人喘不过气来。那那种惊讶呢，会让人仿佛短暂不能呼吸。这要保持的时候用到副词 momentarily， 就表示短暂的，就是在 moment 后面加上 a r i l y 变成 momentarily。好了，那么以上这些讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。欢迎来到一魂鸟字大解析。This is Holly. What's up, everybody? This is Shane. Welcome to Confusing Words. Okay, I'm confused why you're like this. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> 今天的主题是工。Oh. Okay, we have career, job, occupation, work. These three jobs, where do you fall in? The first one, career. It's a career. It's, this is like something that maybe you do for a very long time. Maybe、mm -hmm. in your whole life, you only have one career. So it's more like your career. 职涯就是你一生可能不会有太多 career 的变换。So an example would be I'm hoping for a career in medicine. So 我希望从事医学方面的工作。那你可能你今天当医生，你不会明天就说，哎、欸，我要去当 businessman。所以应该应应该有啦，但是不常见，对不对 ？Okay, so compare this to job. Just means. You just work, just 一份工作。嗯，其实比较像是你每到一个新的公司就是换一个 job。That's right. 嗯哼 ，It's pretty simple, right? He he was out of a job when the store closed. 哦，这家店歇业之后他就失业了。Oh, so sad. Okay, next one, occupation. Occupation. Okay, so this one is a little bit just just 
真实的。Mm -hmm. Maybe you're writing on a resume or application. You will, it will say what is your occupation. Ah,、uh, so it actually just is asking you your job, what you do. That is actually the same meaning. It is just a more real usage. Right. For example, in the space marked occupation, she wrote teacher. In the space marked occupation, she wrote teacher. The last one, work. Okay, well, this this is quite straightforward. <laughs> just go to work. Right. Okay, he just, you, you know, he's a bit more casual. The idea, right? Yeah, and it、okay. kind of just means like you could say her job, her work. It just means her work. Ah, right. It is work, or you are doing those kinds of work. So, for example, she enjoys her work because it keeps her busy. Ah, she likes her work because it keeps her busy. Ah, she likes her work because it keeps her busy. All right. Well, our career is trying to make things less confusing for you,、mm -hmm. so I think we should go into live action. Yes,、All、live、right. action. Now that you've graduated college, are you ready to jump right into a career? I don't think so. I think I want to just get a part-time job to earn some money, and then travel around the world. That's a great idea. Work can wait. You should see the world and grow as a person first before starting whichever occupation you decide to do in the future. Yeah, I'm the type of person who thinks you really need to balance work and play. That's so true. You don't want to get right out of college and start your career too soon without seeing what the rest of the world has to offer. Who knows? Maybe I'll just try a bunch of different jobs throughout my life and allow myself to be more free. I don't want to get too stuck. You know what I mean? I totally feel you. So I've been thinking about going here.